crying. But it ain't the pain. And it ain't the hurt. It's the shame of it. That's what gets me. Once when I fell out of the loft and busted my arm, did I cry? I sure hurt a lot. But I didn't cry, did I? I ain't so unreasonable I can't see what I done was a fool thing. But I ain't no use to them. And I got no use for them. Took me in an orphan, hoping I'd grow up useful. But I ain't. And I never had no proper clothes for a boy. Except in these. And they was even once the old man's. Fact is, I'm... I'm just a thorn in their side. And I hate them. I hate them both. <laughs>
Over such here, that's so I can see folks are coming before they sees me. <laughs> Your book's upside down. Yes, right. Yeah. Well, that uh, that's cause I got upside down eyes. What's that supposed to mean, upside down eyes? Well, you see, boy, you see, when the Lord made me, He made a little mistake. <laughs> he uh, He got my eyes in upside down. See? Now, you see, for I see you sitting there, and me sitting here, you see, and me looking at you. Now, as far as you is concerned, you might just as well be sitting on a cloud. <laughs> What's your name, boy? Where are you from? My name's George Mellish. Mellish, man. I don't know. Mellish, man. You know, where's all your folks? Dead. Dead? Well, that's too bad, boy. Yeah, that. But then, you know, you know, the good Lord, the good Lord giveth, and the good Lord taketh away. I bet you're hungry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you come on in the house, boy. You come on in the house, I'll give you more dinner than you can eat in a week. Come on, boy. speaking, I have. Good day in the morning. You ain't married, are you? Married? No, sir, I ain't but 12. Well, my ma neither. Those folks took me in after my own ma died. Oh, yeah. And they were so clean, you just up and run away, huh? Well, they was clean, all right. But, but I gotta tell you the truth. I wasn't what you'd call a good boy. Well, I used to try to be good. When I'd say my prayers at night, and then when I'd wake up the next morning, Say to myself, now today, George, I'm gonna be as good as gold. Sure, sure. And then was the very days when you'd act a fool, huh? Yeah, kick over the milk bucket. Yeah, that's right. That, that's what I used to do. Still do. And drop the eggs. <coughs> time and time again. And leave things in the road. Uh, you know something, boy? You is a fool. Yes, it sticks out on you just like a cut snout on a hog. You were just a plain fool. Yes, sir. And stop calling me sir. My full name is Dirty James Jellin. But lately, nobody don't call me nothing but Dirty. I don't know why. Let's <laughs> got the coffee's boiling over. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, boy. That's a sign. That is a sign. You were the first.
stranger ever come into this here house, that cat took two that away. That's a sign, boy. You and him are going to be great friends. Yes, sir. Great friends. I hadn't thought about staying. Well, you ain't planning to eat up all my vittles and just walk right out of here, is you? Is you? I didn't, I didn't mean to talk rough to you like that. I, of course, I know you got to get out of here sooner or later. You know, you got to go out in the world, make your fortune and all like this and that. But you wouldn't get out of here and leave an old man all alone, would you? No sooner than you get here. Well, I'd be, I'd be proud to visit for a few days. You and me, we're going to have just a little drop of liquor just to, just to celebrate the occasion. Oh, no, sir, no, sir, I couldn't do that, no. What's the matter, that good liquor? No, well, sir. You see, I've I taken the pledge. <laughs> you were taking the pledge, <laughs> not taking the liquor. to do today? Well, will you please stop asking me silly questions like that? Two weeks now you've been here, and all I get is, when to do this, why to do this, when to do this, do that, don't do this, do this. Boy, whatever you're doing, and I hope it's nothing, you keep right on doing it.
Yes, sir, clean it. Why'd you get that broom? I found it under your bed. Give it here. Give it here. Boy, you were ruined. You were spied for manhood. If anybody had ever told me that I would live to see the day when I would see a red-blooded boy sweep me up a room, I'd have called him a liar. Right to his face. And the fool killer's money gets you shook. <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he wasn't looking outside right now. He's waiting to pounce on you. Who? Who, who, who? The fool killer. That's who. Who's the fool killer? He's a great tall fella. Mm. Eight feet tall, I reckon. Tall and skinny. And he goes around, he carries a chopper so sharp. So sharp, he'd have cut through a fence post just like a seagull. What's the chopper for? Well, chopping pools, of course. Now, what's he want to go and do that for? Because that's his line of work, boy. That's all. That is his line of work. <laughs> you see, boy, they see when the, when the pool gets too thick in any particular spot, the pool killer, he stirs up a wall. You may hear tell about how the boys in blue won the war and they saved the Union and they freed the slaves and all like this and that. I ain't saying that's a lie. But what I am saying is that war so killed off a monstrous parcel of fools. The Lord, he made dogs for killing cats, cats for killing rats, rats for gnawing vittles, and folks to eat the vittles. And then he made the fool killer for killing the fools. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just come in here to see if you were all right, that's all. A fool killer. Is he real? Oh, he's real, all right. I'm going to tell you about a fool I know of one. And about the first time he met up with a fool killer. You see, boy, you see, this here fool, he was a fool right from the time he was a young un, you know, so he couldn't help himself, you know. He, uh, he was very much like you, boy. His head crammed full of the doggone notions that you hear tell of. One day, one day he even got some chicken feathers and sewed them onto his sleeve. And he jumped off the barn roof because somebody told him he could fly. <laughs> that was the first time the fool killer come hunting him out. Fool killer come, walk round the bed. Fool killer spit on his thumb. Felt the edge of his chopper. Fool killer just stood there, staring down at the boy. Why? Fool killer figured he was a little, little green yet. You know, he figured if he waited a little while, that he would get to be even a bigger fool, more, more ripe for chopping. Ever see him again? Mm hmm. Two, three times maybe. Last time was when the poor fool hitched up the old mare to the buggy and drove away the lady into town, into the justice of the peace, for to get married. That night, that's when it happened. All tucked up nice and cozy in the widow's bed. When, well, what you reckon he hear outside, under his window? Fool? I'm coming for you, fool. Fool, I'm here. There stood the fool killer red right in the room, leaning over the bed, his chopper gleaming in his hand. If I'd known this year was gonna happen, I'd have chopped you down a long time ago. But now, now you got yourself married to a good, clean, church-going woman. <laughs> and anything I could do to you, compared to what she's gonna do to you, would be child's play. And he just disappeared as old. <laughs> you reckon, reckon the fool killer be back for you? Uh, for me? Oh, shucks, boy. I'm 70, 80, 
90 years. I don't know. Oh, the Lord knows how old I is. But there's one sure thing. Uh, Evan, he come, or Evan, he don't. It don't make a bit of difference to me. Boy, you... You look kind of poly. Yes, sir, you sure do look kind of poly. Hey, you know them? You, uh, you get a good sleep now, get a good rest. Save your strength, cause you and me, we gotta, we gotta go into town tomorrow. <laughs> That's the second time you've done that, boy. What's wrong with you? Your feet get in your way? I don't know. I, I think I feel poorly. Yeah. Jim, I don't want to go into town. I purely don't want to go. Oh, you hush your mouth, boy. Don't talk silly like that. I, I ain't going to leave you, boy. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. I ain't never going to leave you. Promise me, Jim? Promise? Sure. Sure. Yeah, 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 boy. Come on. Come on. You miss seeing you. Don't you run from me, James Gelliman. She's got trouble. I feel it. Things is all going woozy and troubled in my head. She, 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 she. She was a year to Jim. He was the death of his sister. And he's able to do the same with me. Even threatening him with jail. And I'm too sick to even stay on my feet. I'm not scared to open my eyes. Scared that ton of woman's gonna come down on me again. She is. Your medicine. Angelina Fanshaw. I gotta boil or I sit down. My mama can't make up her mind whether it's bad blood or the meanness coming out. This is my dolly. She comes all the way from Paris, France. Ain't she beautiful? What's that for? I'm going to lend her to you. I don't want no... You think you don't. You just think you don't. You can tell her secrets. How's that? Whenever I got a secret, I tell it to her right away. Then when Mama asks me, I haven't got it no more. That don't make no sense at all. But it works just the same. That way, Mom don't find out things. You mean... You mean you tell your mama lies? 
I can't tell her my secrets when I haven't got them anymore. Can I? You're just a common garden liar. Well, don't you call me no liar. You don't deserve no help, you slimy serpent. Wait. My father's the constable, and he's going to find out where you come from. That's where he's going to send you back to. You going to run away again? Ain't nobody going to send me back. How are you going to run away without no clothes? Do you know where my clothes is at? None of your beeswax. Would you get them for me? Maybe. What would you do for me? What would you want? Yes. I can't. Sure you can't, because it's a secret. Guess I'll have to tell secret and she'll tell you. The secret ain't saying a word. She ain't? You sure she ain't? Well, she wouldn't anyway. Maybe you better tell him. Then close your eyes. I'm the only girl in the fifth grade who ain't been kissed. First woman I ever did kiss. Funny, it didn't bother me no more than it would have spit. Come on in. I'd begun to think you was never coming. Shh. It's the witching hour. Where's your broomstick? Listen to me. I hear my pa say he's going to have you back where you first come from before you can bat an eye. So you better get going while the going's good. I brought your clothes, a jacket, and a pair of shoes. Oh, thank you, Blessing. I'll probably go to jail for aiding a criminal. But I don't care. Will you get a licking? Probably not while I got this spoil. You've been real good to me, Blessing Angelina. You can turn around now. Put out the light. Follow me. the way. Would you care to have me kiss you once more before I leave? Seems like you're getting mushy on me. What? It's 
Will you just get along out of here, boy, before I say something I'll be sorry for? Goodbye, Mushy. He could have turned back. He never even turned back. Fool killer. Who sent you, boy? What's your name? Where do you come from? Who do you think you are, anyway? That's a good man. You give me your cover. I'm obliged. I hope you wasn't cold.
Ain't you having any? Do you know of a spring or creek around here where I could get myself something to drink? and never go back to where he is again. I could do that. Tate as if it looks like he'd miss my company. Wouldn't cost him nothing to open his mouth and say a few words. But then again, I don't know. These things you can, can feel the feel going right through you. Like the ground that's warm with the sun. Like his hand touching you. So the right away the warm comes, comes back inside you. <laughs> like it most slipped off a barn roof and was catched. My name's George Mellish, and I'm heading west. I reckon I cut up pretty foolish last night. I ask your pardon. I ask your pardon, too. What for? Last night I come at you rough. Ask your questions wasn't none of my business. Your answer was to hit me a lick. I wouldn't ask a grown man his personal business. Anymore than I expect him to ask me. And I got no right to ask you just because you was a boy. So, I ask your pardon. Since you told me your name fair and square, tell you mine good as I can. Call me Milo. Milo Bogardus. Well, good luck. Thank you. My true name. It ain't? No, sir. It was a name took off a dead fella and give to me. I surely never heard of such a thing. doing? Going swimming? Swimming? Right. Well, it ain't hardly spring yet. I never heard a grown person think of such a thing. fearful and quiet. You could look at it forever and never get tired. Which one was it you seen? The Atlantic or the Pacific? The Gulf of Mexico. 
I am to see the Pacific. The main reason I'm going west is, is prospecting for gold. Why? Why? Well, you strike it rich and get a great mansion and a carriage and pair and a diamond ring. And wouldn't it be great to strike it rich? No. No? Well, what would you like then? I like to eat when I'm hungry. Talk to folks when I want to and not when I don't. And see the world. I can feel the grass growing beneath me. I can feel the sun and the stars spinning around me. <laughs> I've got an ant on my big toe. I run away. It wasn't my own folks I run from. Those folks took me in after my own folks died. I was running away again when, when I met up with you. I reckon you had reasons. Did you ever hear tell of the fool killer? What's that? Fool killer's a great giant. With a... with a chopper. And if you're foolish, comes and chops you. Chops you for a fool. I've done things. Not sweeping a dirty floor. I left a churn in the middle of a road and a wagon wheel came over it. I sure done things. You reckon I'm something extra of a fool? Is there a real fool killer? Is there? I don't know. I'm cold. Take my coat. Come along with me a ways. Which direction you headed? West. I'd sure admire to. has got no history. Like I was born full growed. Like I was never born of woman at all. But come straight from God's hand. A Finnish man. Unknown as a child. That's how it was when I come to in the hospital. First thing I knowed 
when I knowed anything at all, was pain. Pain. Like two armies inside my head trying to push the sides apart. When it led up some, I seen I was in a great long room with white windows. I felt heat beating down through the roof. There was rows of beds to the left and right and across from me. Men and women moving back and forth among them. One of them had stopped by my bed to tend me and say words, but I couldn't make out anything what they meant. Sights and sounds and moving. Just pain is all the meaning they had to me. Men and women went among the beds in that place, trying to stop the pain. Like a line of foolish children joins hands to stop the tide of the ocean. But the pain come and come. Like the tide, they couldn't stop it. There was pain for all. When I began to move around, tending them sicker than me, I found out something. I found out I'd been given a gift, which is to take away pain. Sometimes I could do it with a look, or by the touch of my hand. Sometimes the pain would pass out of the other fellow through me and go away. in the war. When I got this here, it knocked me so that I couldn't remember anything that ever happened in my life before, or even my own name. So when the feller in the bed next to me died, the folks in the hospital just taken his name and give it to me for mine. Was you wounded in battle? So they told me. I never knowed. Couldn't you remember no fighting or nothing? No, not a blame thing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. I surely never heard of such a thing. How could a good person forget all that? Well, I don't rightly know. Must be the Sunday, all them people. And a preacher telling a man is born in sin. Me, I don't cotton to that idea. We're all God's creatures, every one. Come from his hand, the way he made us. Only cities and fancy clothes and houses and railroad trains, things like that, often come between us and God and cause us kind of to lose track of him. And the ones should be helping folks find their way back to God. Preachers, I mean. He's so busy telling them how sinful they are. And how they're going to hell if they don't repent. Folks often get tangled up worse than ever. Marlo? Couldn't we go down for just a bit? Strange cities and strange houses is a place of my enemies, George. Your brothers, how come some's your enemies? Can't any more 
Those brothers, wasn't they? Milo? 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 I thought you were gonna die. I wasn't nowhere as near dead. I seen God. And he was like a light. Nothing but one big cloud of light, the brightest anyone ever seen. It was a regular glory. It was a regular glory. You know what, George? You could be my brother. My brother and you wouldn't know because you'd been too little to remember when I went off to war. For all we know, you could be my brother. I wish I was. But I never had no brother. I wish I was, Milo. but a camp meeting, George. It's nothing but preaching and hymn singing. Fixing to listen to what a sinner you are and then go up and get yourself saved, is that it? Why do you want to go? Because I've never seen nothing like it before. And we ain't been around any folks in a long time. All right. All right, we'll go. Thank you. 
darkness gathers, the peaceful creatures of the day give way to savage prowlers of the night. The lion, the tiger, the wolf, the sinner! <laughs> Sinners, fools, how do you sleep at night? Do you wake from nightmares? and wonder if the fires of hell is waiting to swallow you. Do you hear rustlings and rumblings in the bushes? Do you hear whisperings? And then don't you wonder, ain't they, the hounds of hell is sneaking after you? Do you hear the sound of footsteps sneaking nearer? And then don't you wonder, Ain't they the evil one a common, a common, a common for you? It's the truth! Fools! Sinners! Sinner, you piles up silver and gold to build mansions. You bolts your door with bolts of iron. Yes, you do. Drinks liquor. Smokes tobacco. And your pleasure's the flesh. Now, don't you do that. Don't you pleasure the flesh. Think of what your savior bore in the gloomy garden, sweating blood from every pore to procure thy pardon. See him stretched upon the wood, bleeding. Bleeding. Grieving. Grieving. Crying. Crying. Suffering all the wrath of God. Groaning. Gasping. Dying. Dying. Oh, we got sinners here. Oh, we got fools here. Which one of you's come to mock and scoff? Which one of you's the prophet maker? Which one of you's the liquor swiller? Which one of you's the wife beater? I tell you this, we got them all here. Ain't we got them here? Ain't we? Ain't we? Ain't we? You know what else we got? Sins at scarlet. Sins red like crimson. Sins are mortifying the flesh. Harlots, seducers. Women who lie down with the devil. Women who paint their lips and paint their cheeks. And their kisses burn. And their kisses chill. And their kisses drag down to hell. The day of reckoning is at hand. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory.
Don't throw me down in the hell! Let me hear you say it, young sinner. Say glory. Glory. Say glory. Glory. Say glory. 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 Marlo. Marlo. I wouldn't blame him if he left me. Me doing what he didn't want me to do. Wouldn't blame if he was pure disgusted. And went and rid himself of me for what I'd done. Getting saved. I don't feel born again at all, getting saved. Just don't feel... No different. Not at all. I sure done a fool thing again. Milo? Milo! 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 I've got to tell you this. I know I'll go to hell saying it. But I'd rather Milo was killed. Yes, I would. And laying dead somewhere. That he just lit out and left me without even saying no goodbyes. He could have told me he couldn't stand to have me around no more. He could have told me.
haven't seen you in town before. You visited in here in town? No. Looking for work. You know of any? I might. Come along. Come along. Come on. Plan to stay long? I don't know. Looks to me like you could use a proper meal. I've got a supper cooking on the stove now. Come on. Traveling alone? Yes, sir. Good morning. Seth. What's your name? George. George Mellish. Where are you from, George? A long ways off. And where are you going? Haven't set my mind exactly. If you ever think of resting in place for a while, we might need a boy to help out around here. Is that interest you, George? Where are you going? Tell my husband. When he can talk, see if you take a shine to each other. I hear my pa say he's going to have you back when you first come from before you can bat an eye. So you better get going while the going's good. The fool killer is a man. He is of the male sex. Whereas a good, clean, church-going woman and make him look like a babe in arms. Strange cities and strange houses is a place of my enemies, George. I ain't staying, Milo. Hey, boy! You're leaving? Why? Strange cities and strange houses is the place of my enemies. My wife says your name is George. George Mellis. I'm Sam Dodd. Where are you heading? West? Yes. And I mean to get there as soon as I can. All right. But, uh, sit a minute. Catch your breath.
Just came to see if he was all right. Mr. Dodd? Did you hear it? Hear what? Mama's flute. Well, who's Milo? Nobody you'd know. Man who plays the flute is all. Get some more sleep, George. Good night. Good night. Go ahead, George. What were you saying? Well, there was a Cindy in massacre. That's how my folks was killed. Were you there? Right in the middle of it. Indians hooping and hollering and all like that, was it? And shooting off arrows and a scalp, and like you wouldn't believe, golden curls all over the ground. And when it was over, the, the house, I mean the wagon, the wagon was burned to a cinder. And that's how I became an orphan. Oh, boy. George, that ain't true. It is. Well, I can't help it if you don't believe me. Oh, yes, you can. You wouldn't ask no gold man the questions you've been asking me. You got no right to. I got the right to ask questions I wouldn't ask a man, because you ain't a man. I guess what I most got to know is this. Is it the truth your folks is dead? Yes, sir. Honest and true? Yes, sir. Mr. Dodd? The reason I told you about the uh, Indian massacre is purely a lie. My folks just died. That's all. Just died. When I tell folks that, they worry about it and ask questions. That's all that happened to them. They just died. Thank you for telling me. Down. <laughs> you hurt? Yes, sir. Who won? He did. Ooh. Some fellow named Lem something. Lem Stable. He's at least two years older than you. You give him something to remember? Bloody nose. Maybe a loose tooth. That's a start. He'll think twice before picking on you again. 
Miss Dodd, you think it was a fool thing I'd done? Fighting a fellow bigger than me, I mean. No. I guess a boy always has to fight his way when he comes to a strange town. I guess so. George, you've been stealing candy. I? You have, George. Who's gonna pay for it? I ain't no thief. I may be an orphan. Had a ragtag bobtail, but I ain't no thief. I got along before, and I can get along again. Over my knee, George. Come on. You ain't my pa. I said I was. Lay over my knee. I won't. You will, George. Now listen, George. It isn't easy to give someone a licking when you're not naturally mean and you know it's right. It's not you I'm feeling sorry for. It's Mr. Dodd. You got a lick and a boy could be proud of. I really did. I saw Mr. Dodd when he came up here. And I saw him when he came down. And he didn't look like he enjoyed himself any more than you. I want to tell you something, Joe. Seemed like the Lord didn't want to send us no more. I just want you to know how things was before you come. It's just that I've got a feeling that the Lord sent you to Mr. Dodd and me to keep you for hours. I know it ain't sensible, but it is too sensible. Where you been all this time? Where did you go? North for a while. I mean, after the meeting. What happened to you? What meeting? Why the camp meeting? Where'd you go? Maybe you was dead. Maybe you was mad at me and didn't want me around no more. I wasn't mad at you. you forgot me. No, sure not, George. I couldn't have forgot you. You and me was... Well, was most like brothers, wasn't we?
Where you been? I've been taken in by folks. Their name's Mr. and Mrs. Dodd. He runs a store, and I works in it. Milo, I want you to come and meet them. These awful nice folks. And you'll like them just fine. I want you to come and meet them, Milo. Miss Dodd would be proud to have you for supper. I know. No. Oh, but you wouldn't have to stay the night if you didn't want. No. Milo, it ain't like you think. Tell me how it ain't. They ain't enemies. They've been good to me. They never asked me no questions much. I've tried to send me back nowheres. Milo, please come back with me. Please come back, Milo. Please. All right, George. Bless, O oh Lord, this food to our use and us to thy loving service through Christ our Lord. <laughs> Feeling all right, Milo? It's an accident. No bother. Bless, O oh Lord, this food to our use and us to thy loving service, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I reckon you see a great many interesting things, traveling around the way you do, Mr. Regardus. Yes, sometimes I do. I mean, I always wanted to visit Chicago. But every time it looks like I might, something other comes up. You ever been there? No. But my love, strange cities and strange houses. Mind you, I wouldn't want to live in Chicago. Just take a look at it and come back home. You got things all around you here that them folks up there never even dreamed of. Why? I never thought about it that way, but that's true. But a town of this size, we don't get much excitement, that's sure. Somebody's cow has twin calves. It makes a nine-day wonder for us. But the only excitement we had in a year was the revival out to Tucker's Grove. It ended with the preacher getting killed with an axe. You tell Mr. Bogardus about it, George? For a time, they thought they got the one who done it. A man named Whiskey Pete. Well, they was wrong. They had to let him go. And to this day, nobody knows who done it. I know. I know who done it. Who? The fool killer. Who's that, George? The fool killer's a, a giant. He's eight foot tall. The fool killer, he carries a chopper. And with this chopper, the, the fool killer chops up fools. George. Well, like he took his chopper to the Reverend Spots and killed him. Never heard you so wrought up, George. Almost think you believe that story. Ain't you never felt like there was some sort of something like the fool killer? You never done things you'd know it was just plain foolish and felt like you was gonna have to pay the price? Something awful coming after you. I believe it's a person's conscience makes him feel that way. But how can you tell? How do you know? You've never seen God, but you believe in him. How do you know they ain't a fool killer just the same way? Now that's enough. Don't talk wild. Thank you for the supper.
When are you going to tell them, George? About your enemies? I'd never tell them that. I used to trust me, Marlo. What's the matter? What did when I When are you going to tell them that you're coming with me? Oh, Milo. These things you don't know make it terrible hard. What things? The things they've done for me. Say it out, George. You ain't coming with me. Marlo, listen a minute. Don't be mad at me, Marlo. I can't stand it when you are. Well, stay with them then. What'd you go off and leave me for? You, you never even gave me the warden. Never even said goodbye. You changed. They taken you and changed you. You got the mark of cities and houses and men on you. Why don't you get undressed? Get into bed. Good night. changed you.
I'll never know why Marlow jumped. Was it to hurt I'd done him? Or was it for me? Or was it just that he'd come to the end? I'll never know. I gotta say it. Things is gonna be too peaceful. And when things get too peaceful, they get downright uninteresting. And me being someone who strange things is always happening in his life. Being sick gives you time to... Time to remember. And remembering, I just can't help get an awful, an awful restless feeling. And even though Mr. and Mrs. Dobbin so, so good to me. Could be, I'll start thinking of all the things I ain't yet seen. And I might just have to hit the road again. Never, never play the fool. 